<laughs> All right, where do we start here, DB, huh? Fire away. No coach is ever completely satisfied, but the word is that you're pretty happy with how things have gone so far. Yeah, but, uh, I am excited about how things have gone so far. Obviously, we're older, uh, so we're much further along than we would be at this point normally. Uh, maybe even further along than we were with my year four team in Ohio, which was an older team. So, you know, that that's a good thing. Uh, it certainly doesn't guarantee anything, but I think we practice well. I like the way that the newcomers have adjusted, both uh, Cosby and Starks, Black and Finky, you know, those guys have done a good job adjusting. The, the old upperclassmen deserve a lot of credit for that, uh, especially Edgar and Abrams. How has the transition, transition gone without the services of Tracy? Going well. Uh, you know, he's there every day. You know, I try to put him in situations, Tracy, where uh, the other day I asked him to drop a play for the Orange team. He said, man, this is a little harder than what I thought. Um, so that's been good. You know, different perspective for him. I think it's going to make him uh, a better person and a better player. You know, it's probably hard for him to see that now because I know he's chomping at the bit to try to get out there. Even in practice, you can tell he's salivating. But it's just, you know, one of those things that, um, you know, has kind of been dealt. Those cards have been dealt. We've got to play them the best we can. You know, fortunately for us, in the third year, we have a little bit more of an ability to absorb it. You know, you never want to lose a good player uh, and someone of, certainly of his leadership caliber. Uh, but, you know, with Starks and Tate and Rice having played the position in the past, um, you know, we're certainly more equipped to be able to absorb something like that than we would have been in year one or year two. John, you mentioned experience. You have now more experience, obviously, in Champaign. Do you feel more comfortable in your own surroundings down there with the conference and everything else? Yeah, you know, I felt comfortable from the beginning because I had a previous stint in the league. I've grown up in this area. My, I've been here basically other than about four years where I left to go to North Carolina State my whole life. You know, I've been in the Midwest. So that comfortability factor was not, uh, that, that learning curve, so to speak, was not real large. But I do think experience is a great teacher. Uh, I think our staff would tell you, I think we feel more prepared now, certainly, than we did prior to year one, at, you know, a, as we should. You know, we're all trying to learn. I challenge the players to be lifelong learners, and the staff has to be the same. When you're up here in Chicago representing, what, what are you trying to get across? You know, what are you trying to get across to just the media here, the big time media, but especially Chicago when you're bringing the program up? Um, I wouldn't say necessarily anything specific, Steve, other than be, be ourselves, who we are. We're proud of who we are. You know, we're proud of our institution. We're proud of the fact that we've got great tradition at Illinois. Uh, we're proud of what we're doing with the State Farm Center. Um, we've got great leadership on campus. We've got, you know, we built our roster up of talented uh, people and players over the last two to three years. It's, it's deeper now than it ever has been. It's, you know, all those things I think are, are, are positive. There's an excitement level and a momentum right now, and, and that's, you always want it going, in, uh, you know, that trajectory going that way, and that's certainly the case uh, uh, for us. So I think the most important thing is just continuing to be who we are, you know, and I think that, that shines through. Uh, I want our players to be who they are. I think our guys are starting to get more comfortable uh, in terms of what we're about. Um, and they do a great job, especially our older guys, of sending the message of how, you know, how we do things and how we want to build our basketball program. You seem to gel later in the year last year, made some adjustments in the lineup. Uh, what do you see from Malcolm this year as well? Well, Malcolm's really improved. You know, he's gained 20 plus pounds uh, while maintaining body fat, which is hard to do. Uh, I think he's matured a lot. Uh, trying to get him to value discipline and details still a little bit more, but he's much further along there than he was a year ago as well. Uh, Malcolm has a gift to score. Uh, he's a multiple um, uh, position guy, which is always great to have in terms of versatility. And uh, hard worker, high character guy. You know, obviously, I, I feel blessed to have a chance to coach him. But I think he's the type of kid this year. A lot of times you see guys make their most significant jump between their freshman and sophomore year, and Malcolm certainly could be a candidate to do that. John, a bunch of non-conference games, of course, first, but how tough will the conference are get in this season? Well, it's great. I mean, top to bottom, it's, it's really good. We're at a, an era right now, I think, where the coaching top to bottom, the players top to bottom, the venues, uh, you know, the Big Ten network, you know, all the things that kind of uh, attribute uh, to, our, to our league, I think, make our league very, very strong. You know, it's, it makes it look challenging, but it's also a lot of fun. John, what are your expectations for the team this year? Um, our expectations are the same, and that is, I'll be honest with you, the same as year one, year two, year three, and any year, and that's to reach our potential and to cap out. Uh, I thought we did that the first two years. 
And, uh, you know, will we do that this year? We'll see. You know, it's still early. I like the progress we're making. I like the fact we're older. Uh, but that doesn't guarantee anything. You still have to be tough. You still have to be together. You still have to sacrifice. You still have to execute. You still have to have a great attitude and give big-time effort every day. And, you know, I think we're, uh, we're, we're, uh, we're capable of doing that. Now, w will we do it? You know, that, that's, uh, you know, that falls on me, and then that falls on our other guys that are in leadership positions. First time as a stalwart for you, five, five, you know, three-year starter there. But talk about kind of the depth behind him at the five position, and also with the four, you know, Malcolm obviously getting some time there. But talk about how those other interior positions are sizing up so far. Sure. We, we have a lot of versatility up front. We do. Um, you know, Nana's a guy, obviously, that's the anchor. Um, both at both ends. He's really improved offensively. Um, you know, defensively, I think he's an absolute monster. I think he's one of the best defenders in the country. Uh, I've been saying that now for two years. Um, so it starts with him. And then, obviously, Maverick Morgan's improved a great deal. Uh, Colbert's gotten stronger. Uh, Finky and Black have adjusted faster than what I thought they would. Uh, Black has really added a dimension to our team of, you know, physicality and you know, relentless motor similar to, uh, to Nana. You know, I think Black wakes up with his motor on and doesn't turn it off till he goes to bed. I mean, he's just kind of one of those guys. And then Hill's uh, potential and versatility to be able to give us a four guard lineup at times. So we've got a lot of versatility up front. John, did you see Nana in high school or on the AAU circuit? And you know, Jeremy, I didn't. Um, I knew who he was, obviously had an awareness of him. I've seen pictures of him at that stage uh, with his goggles and glasses and, you know, his body and what it looks like now, you know, relatively speaking. And uh, he's, he's really worked. I mean, he's, you know, he's approached this thing like you hope every kid would approach it, and that is that he, believe me when I tell you, that kid will have no regrets. You know, zero. I mean, that's just the way he approaches everything that he does. And... Um, you know, it's a great lesson, you know, obviously, I think, for any student athlete. If I could have someone uh, uh, someone say to me, hey, I want to mirror one of your student athletes, you know, how, you do, how do you do things academically? How do you act? How do you treat people? How do you play? How do you learn? You know, I would have them try to mirror or imitate him. Who was it that he changed the most last year to... You could see his improvement. I mean, it, what did he concentrate on the most, or what was it that changed the most about him? Um, you know, I thought early he was pretty good offensively, Shannon, looking back at the clips. I thought uh, I thought he lost a little bit of confidence maybe offensively late, and that's on me and on him. Um, you know, he's, he's got to be, I tell him you got to earn the right to be confident. Don't let anybody steal your mind or anything steal your mind. Uh, but defensively, he was a rock the whole year. I mean, he just was you know, exceptional uh, defensively. Uh, rebounding was, uh, he'd be the first to tell you, he wants to be a better rebounder per minute played. Uh, that was a little bit random at times. Offensive output was a little bit random at times. And I think if we can get consistency in those two areas to accompany his defensive efforts, then obviously you've got a, a heck of a player. He's already really good, but I think that takes him to another level. What do you see for, for him NBA-wise? What, what do you think? Oh, I don't know. I mean, I, I've had people ask me about him uh, that live in that world, um, and I think he's, you know, for his size, I mean, to be able to move the way he does, uh, to do the things that he can do defensively at his size, his height, his weight, his wingspan, um, his ability to defend pick and rolls, a lot of the NBA game is pick and rolls. His ability to play offensively in pick and roll situations because he has great touch, he's a good jump shooter in pick and roll situations. You know, and then you add that character element, the intelligence and how smart he is and you know, his motor, how it never stops and you know, I, I think certainly he has a chance. When you play four out. Where he can give you guys some good minutes behind him when needs a blow or get that out. Yeah, I hope so, Marcus. I think that's a big key to our season. Whether it's him, whether it's Colbert, whether it's Spinky, um, those guys collectively by committee have got to do a good job. Who that guy is yet, I don't know. It's pretty competitive right now. When you play four out. So that's a good thing to have options, but you're right. I think that's really important because he's not going to be able to play 40 minutes. You know, so how productive are we? Uh, 
defensively and offensively when he's out of the game. I think that's a big key to our uh, being consistent. From a personality standpoint, the guys talk about Maverick being kind of a yeah, no question. I mean, Mav's, Mav beats to a different drummer a little bit, uh, but I also think that's what gives him a chance. You know, I think he's been uh, really physical here in the preseason. I think he's finished better. Um, Dustin's done a really good job with him developing him and getting him to do what we need him to do. When you play four out and one in, or just a four guard lineup, what are the extra pressures on the one guy that's in? whether it's Nana? Uh, not with the way the game's being played now, Rob. I just think there's very few teams that play two traditional front court players the bulk of the game. Yeah. They may give you that lineup look like mm -hmm. we will this year, but I think the game's headed in a direction where it's more like, you know, similar to, you know, the, you watch USA Basketball even. You know, it hit me a couple years ago when I was out there watching in 2012 and there were some things they were doing in practice where James and Durant were at four and five. Well, those guys are perimeters, you know. So I just think the game has changed. I don't think it necessarily adds, you know, you look at our league last year, a lot of teams played a perimeter style player as a fourth guard or fourth four man. Mm -hmm. So I don't know how much pressure really, you know, stresses it that it, that, that it adds. I, I think it's a... Uh, I think it can be beneficial for us. We look at it as an advantage. If not, if not pressure, then how does it change the skill set that's necessary of that guy on the inside, uh, as opposed to a traditional one, one yeah, through five? Not a whole lot different in our system. You know what we'll expect from Nana, whether we're in our four out one in look or three out two in look, is the same. You know, it's really not a whole lot different. Um, you know, it's more, I think, for me, like who is playing that position. Maverick, we want to play to his strengths. Nana, we want to play to his strengths. Pinky, we want to play to his strengths. Colbert, we want to play to his strengths. So I think it's dependent on who they are individually more so than necessarily, you know, the number five or the five position. Yep. John, family background always plays a role in kids and how they develop. And how is Nana's unique family background played a role in who he is and what he's become? Well, obviously, uh, you know, Emmanuel and Immaculata have done a great job of raising him. I mean, that's pretty obvious, you know, the character uh, that he has, you know, certainly his parents deserve a lot of credit for that, his coaches that he had previously before he came to Illinois, you know, I think, um, you know, I think that's one of his real strengths, and they've done a great job uh, with him, you know, so uh, parents are important to him, uh, Nan is a real respectful kid. And you can tell he gets a lot of his attributes character-wise from them. It seems, like, it seems like he's almost their American dream, you know, why they, why they came here so their kids can be there. Yeah, I mean, obviously I don't want to speak for them. You'd have to ask them, you know, that question. But, you know, they've done a great job with him. I've told them that. Is there somebody who is uh, closest to being in the Nana mold as far as the off-court stuff he gives the program and the on-court stuff, but just the, you know, the trajectory and all that. Who will be the next one in that role? I think we'll get Tracy back. Tracy will be, obviously, from a leadership perspective. I mean, Tracy will, you know, by the time he comes back uh, next year, Lord willing, full bill of health, will be a four-year captain. You know, that's pretty rare. So his experience level, his leadership will certainly help. Um... You know, I think Jalen Tate's been very vocal, has a natural inclination to lead. Um, I think from a character standpoint, Leron Black. From a motor standpoint, Leron Black. Now, Leron's still trying to figure out, you know, what's up and what's down right now. Once he gets that figured out, I think he's he's got a chance to be a guy that really exemplifies a lot of what we're about, both on and off the court. There's a, I hope a lot of them, but I would say if I was, you know, and I've mentioned this, probably Hill. You know, I think Hill has had a great summer. Um, you know, just need him to mature and with, in the areas of discipline and details a little bit more, but he's very, very talented. You know, he's very capable of having a, a breakthrough year. In what way do you want Ray to be a little different this year? Well, I think the biggest thing is last year I had I put Ray in, 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 in positions because of the lack of depth on our roster, the youth and the newcomers, to carry too much of a load. You know, he was asked to guard the other team's best off perimeter player most nights. There were nights he was playing 35 to 40 minutes. There was nights we needed him to get 20 plus. And oh, by the way, if you could get 5 to 10 rebounds, that'd be good too. 
you know, and so we, we put a lot on his shoulders. I think the biggest change for him this year is he's going to be able to be who he is. There were different rules within our system that he had when he was at the one, which he played late in the year, versus playing two and three. So I, I felt like I, I dealt him some tough cards to play, and he played them well. You know, now I think he's going to be able to focus on rebounding, defending his position, being scored. You know, and I think the fact that we've got more shooting out there, better passers, multiple offensive weapons, the guy who's going to benefit from that the most, in my opinion, is Ray. Have you, have you, I'm sorry, no, have, has your uh, outlook on ACL injuries been colored at all by what a struggle it's been for Derrick Rose at, you know, as a point guard to, to get back? I, they say no two yeah. recoveries from that injury are you the know, same. We've been, we've been really, you know, really fortunate um, with that stuff. Tracy's the first one we've had uh, in seven years and it was kind of an odd. It was a, playing two on two and a skill workout and he just landed on. There wasn't even really any contact. So a very minimal contact. So it just kind of happened. Um, but not really. You know, I've had whether it's Walter Offit, who's on my staff now, went through two ACLs, David Lighty when I was at Ohio State. Those guys came back better than good as new. I think right now the ACL injury is a fairly typical injury. And, um, you know, the rehab for that, as well as the length of time that you're out, is fairly rote. Like, everyone kind of knows that now. There's doctors that have done multiple ACL uh, surgeries, which obviously is the case with Tracy. And I don't want to say it's like old hat, but, and you don't want it ever to happen. But I think it's much more advanced now than it was years and years ago where it may have been more of a setback or a longer setback. It, it, have, have, has it been indicated to you that it's possible that by the start of next season he's still going through, you know, he's still getting ready, he's still maybe, I mean with yeah, Rose it's all about when I need to feel ready and it just, just Yeah, you know, I mean protracted. I think a lot of it's depend individually specific to the kid. Um, obviously I know when he's having the surgery and I, I know how long it usually takes to come back from that, you know, anywhere from 8 to 12 months, depending on the, the individual. Uh, I know that's kind of a broad range, but we're hoping that we have no reason to think that it won't be any be closer to 8. You know, we're just going to kind of do what we do what we do and control what we can control. I mean, I can't control all that stuff, and neither can Tracy. Does Joe Bertrand's uh, experience with ACL inform Tracy's experience at all? You know, I don't know if Joe's talked to Tracy about that or, or not. Um, that's a great point. You know, obviously Joe and Tracy are really, really close. Tracy's interesting. Like, he's a guy that's been, you know, we have uh, a couple other people that have had ACL tears that we're aware of at the, at the, the high school level or the you know, college level, regardless of sport, and Tracy's kind of reached out to them and talked to them. Tracy's a little different now. He's a tough dude. I mean, he, if anybody can come back from that deal faster than normal or with the right mindset, it's him. Did you talk to Walter about it? Yes, and Walt's talked to him about it. I was about to where do you think the, um, where, what did you envision for the program in year three, and just where, where is it in relation to that? You know, Shannon, honestly, our deal was I just wanted to kind of keep building it and, and add talent. I guess the two thoughts I had was make sure that we continue to add talented people and players to the roster where we have more depth. And so I asked myself, have we done that? Without question. You know, I mean, we're deep now, and everyone's talking about our depth, and Abrams is hurt, and Darius Paul's not here for a year. Those two guys are supposed to be on the roster as well. So there's no question we've added depth, uh, talented people and, and players. And then the second thing I, I always gauge is where's our culture right now? Like, do we have the juniors and seniors are sharing with the freshmen and sophomores, this is how we do things, this is how we dress, this is coach's expectation with class, this is how we do shoot-around, this is how we act, this is how we respond to coaching, this is appropriate body language, this, this is who we are. We have a DNA that we've built up through three years, and without question we have. And as long as those two things are there, then I'm confident the way that we coach our team, and I've got a great staff, our guys are going to keep getting better and improving individually with skill development. Our team's going to be, uh, you know, uh, coached well. We're, we're going to be in good shape there. But I think the two keys for me was by the time we get to that third year, 
that we have more talented people and players. We have the type of guys that we can co coach that are those talented people and players. And is our culture more advanced? That's not even close. I mean, so we, we check both those things off, and that's why I think we're making really, really good progress. Well, I think they impact us, first of all, just, I say globally, but nationally. You're talking about moving our league. We've got offices now in New York City, Washington, D.C. You know, our, I think the thing that's been interesting is statistical research has come out on uh, college football games involving Rutgers and, and, and Maryland. The number of viewer points that those games are getting is astonishing. I think they've exceeded expectations, which what that tells me is in New York City and D.C. and Philadelphia, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, there's a lot of Big Ten alums. There's a lot of people that care about Big Ten athletics. So I, I think it's great for the league that we've continued to, you know, basically grow, we've grown. We've gotten better. And I think in this day and an era of college athletics, you got to get better. You're either going backwards or forwards, and I think it's very evident that the Big Ten's going forward. What's that? I don't think so. I think the RPI obviously shows here recently for sure that we've had, you know, great players, great coaches, great venues. Um, you know, number of teams that are nationally ranked, uh, the, the depth of the league, top to bottom. I mean, I, I just, I think it's a strong. Certainly, I've followed it my whole life growing up in the Midwest, and I think from top to bottom, it's as strong as I've ever seen it. Does that, does that make you more inclined to maybe go after a prospect in that expanded Eastern footprint than you would have? I think so, Tuff, and I think we got to exercise that more. I've talked to our staff about that. No question. No question. I think it gives you a little bit larger blueprint. You know, we use the term breadbasket state and adjacent states. I do think distance is a factor, but what this the network has done and the growth of the Big Ten has kind of pulled some of those areas, so to speak, closer to the breadbasket, not necessarily from a geographic standpoint or mileage standpoint, but from touching Big Ten touching those areas, you know, and vice versa. Do you have a sense of what the perception is about the Illinois program now in the in the league, among whether it's among other coaches or just what you get from the vibe you get. Yeah, my vibe is that everyone thinks there's momentum and there's excitement and we're headed in the, you know, uh, uh, we're moving the needle. Um, and I, I I think that's that's how I feel. And I'll be honest with you, that's how our players feel. Uh, that's that's how my boss. Uh, that's how he feels. So that's all that matters to me. I don't necessarily. I certainly respect the opinions of what the other schools or other people might think of where Illinois basketball is headed. But at the end of the day, I'm more concerned about what our family thinks. And right now, those guys are, you know, con uh, con and convinced as they should be uh, that we're that we're moving. How much different is it for you? Uh, now when you're walking into gyms uh, in Chicago or walking down Michigan Avenue or something like that compared to when you you know first took the job you first took the job you probably well, don't recognize the whole lot I get less uh, are you Jim Furyk <laughs> um, than I did when I first got here um, uh, still a few though uh, but I, you know I, 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 I think it's uh, I think we've been received well uh, you know, I, whether it's Chicago or other parts of the state or even outside of the state. You talked about Jalen twice today without anybody asking about Jalen. And so, obviously, there's some improvement that we, have, we haven't had a chance to see yet. And you've talked about leadership and on the court abilities. Does that, combine with Tracy's extra year, take some pressure off of you to land a top point guard in this recruiting well, class? Well, obviously, as I said earlier, we're going to continue to recruit every position at this point. We want to keep adding talented people and players to the roster. You know, the fact that Tracy will be a fifth-year guy, uh, the fact that Tate has made progress and improvement, you know, no question. I mean, I, I think it gives us some solid depth there to start with heading into next year. Um, you know, Tracy gives you some versatility because he can play with, play, play as a point guard. He can play with a point guard. Mm -hmm. So he gives you a lot of versatility. Um, you know, for us, obviously, it's still a need that we want to get addressed. Um, you know, whether that's 15, 16, that that remains to be seen. Coach, a little more recruiting. Um, 
at what point in your career did you really learn the tricks of the trade of how to of the business pretty much at, at what stop and who did you learn under? I think all of us that are in our coaching family uh, you know a lot of us at one point were kind of tied to, to Herb Sendak and how detailed he was in recruiting um, you know, often a lot of us that are in our coaching family talk about what a great experience that was. It was challenging, but it was. I look back on it and uh, I learned so much. Um, you know, coaching uh, with him and working for him, but others as well. I mean, everyone's different. There's different ways to skin a cat. Um, you know, it's relationship building. Uh, it's fit. I don't think those things really change regardless of institution or where you are or who you're working for. Um, but I think that the details of it, the thoroughness, if so to speak, Alex, of it were probably started early on when I worked my first job, 96 through 2000 for Herb. You were always talking about family, so I imagine you were receptive when Starks was originally looking to come here for family reasons. Oh, no question. You know, Mott is definitely an Illini guy. Uh, done a great job academically, high character kid, he's got a great family. You know what I love about Ahmad too is it means something for him to put that uniform on. You know, I mean he, you know, as, as you watch him and you talk to him, the chance to play at, at Illinois, being where he's from, means a lot to Ahmad so and that means something to me. I wanna... Do you remember what you said when he was first looking at Illinois, looking to kind of come home? Do you remember what you said to him? Well, I was honest with him. Obviously, we had a waiver process and all those different things going on, and you know, we talked about the different options based on how the waiver would turn out. And you know, here we are. You know, obviously, last year, you know, we wanted him to get the waiver. You know, could he have made a difference in a, a game, two at most, probably, that, in terms of getting to the other tournament, probably. But you know, we can't control those things. And now here we are. You know, we didn't certainly don't want you know, one of our leaders and really good players and Tracy to get hurt. But again, if, if that was going to happen, this is a much better year for us to absorb that than the first two years. Kind of follow up on that and, and my previous question. You won the Rivals Recruiter of the Year in 2006. Uh, you're recruiting right now a bunch of people that you can't name that are considered McDonald's All-Americans. But you've also shown a great interest in fifth-year seniors. Sam McLaurin, got, you know, you're going to have Tracy next year. You got John Eakey. Uh Does that take some of the pressure off recruiting, you know, 17-year-old phenoms when you got 23-year-old Yeah, it's a great experts. question, Rob. I, I don't know if, I don't necessarily look at it as, hey, pressure. Either way, you know, I enjoy recruiting. Uh, I enjoy getting to know different kids, different people. Uh, that's one of the benefits of recruiting. Um, for me, it's about putting our team together. And, you know, for example, last year we brought in um, several transfers. And I thought that was important because after our first year, our roster changed. And we were going to bring in four or five freshmen, but I wanted one of them complemented with some seniority, so to speak. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to have nine freshmen or you know, ten freshmen. We wanted to balance all that and then look at what positions that we needed and how we're going to address all those things. So I, I, I think having a balanced roster, not only in terms of what position or positions kids play, but also classes. I think in a perfect world, every coach would like to have, you know, four or five, you know, it, 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 three or four, I should say, in each class. So there's class balance. It doesn't always work that way, but I think it's been a big part of our building of the program, no question about it, has been fourth year and fifth year transfers. I think it's really been helpful in terms of balancing uh, and kind of getting us back to where we had class balance within our recruiting. I know you uh, you guys don't like to say you're about Tracy, but with Nana now being a senior, I mean, he's the last one left of his original class. Yeah. He's been here from the beginning. Do you yeah. see that? In no, that for sure. You know, Nana's such a tell you, great kid. Nana probably, Tracy will tell you, Nana took the ACL in. You know, Nana's such a true, great kid. Nana probably, Tracy will tell you, Nana took the ACL injury harder than he did. You know, um, 
Part of it's because of, uh, his love for Tracy, uh, the fact that they came in together, uh, they're, they're close friends, um, you know, and, and Nana, I think that from his perspective, like, you know, last one standing, I think it's a great point. Uh, I think the first week or so, to be honest with you, it was, you know, trying to, you know, get him to grab a hold of what a great opportunity that was uh, and, and not feel sorry for Tracy, you know, or himself. And I think he kind of got through all that. But Tracy's such a warrior. He was probably the biggest reason. He said, come on, Nana, you know, we got to go. We, can't, we talk about all the time you can't control uh, certain things. And uh, I think Nana's really responded well and has put him in a position where he has to lead more. And he already leads well. And he's, he's uh, been very vocal and he's done a really good job of adjusting. Since that injury, what example do you think of the specific example of Tracy or not Tracy and Nana has stepped up and shown more uh, than Every day. The way he helps Black, the way he helps Finky, um, the way he communicates, the energy level that he brings to practice daily. Um, you know, I'm, I'm going to relish every single day that I get to coach him from now until the end of the season. I can assure you that. Coach, uh, would you like to recruit uh, against Thad now? You know, you recruited for him for a long time, and would you like to get in some battles with him? Yeah. I know I that happened much. Yeah, it does happen some. Um, where they have to be on, you know, maybe a kid's list like we do. Um, but again, I can't control that, so I just, you know, I kind of, we kind of do what we do, regardless of whether it's them or someone else. But obviously, I have a great respect for him, what he's done, uh, their consistency, their, how consistent they've been uh, since he's been there, and obviously, he's done a great job uh, recruiting. Uh, so I certainly respect, you know, respect them for sure. But for you and your staff, uh, what goes on into like a typical day on the road on the recruiting trail? How do you squeeze in all those uh, like flights and then practice? And how do you have enough hours in the Day to do that. Well, it's, it's challenging for sure because you're, you know, you're trying to watch film or watch clips while you're on the plane and bouncing around and getting to two or three places sometimes in, in one day, especially in July. Uh, but we're very blessed in Illinois. We have great resources and, um, you know, private plane flights help. Let's put it that way. Uh, going back to Ahmad for a second, I was talking to him earlier about, you know, obviously he's not the tallest guy in the world, but from a coaching perspective, what does he do to kind of make up for that and still have tremendous success. Well, he's really gifted offensively. You know, he's a high-level shot maker. He's a great ball handler. He makes good decisions. His assist-to-turnover ratio over the course of his career has always been really good. I'm actually trying to get him to make more mistakes, be more aggressive, be less cautious. Um, he's really strong. He weighs 171 pounds and bench presses 290. You don't see that very often from a guy who's 171 pounds. Um, trying to get him to be a little bit nastier on defense. Uh, you know, in his previous stop, they played primarily all zone. You know, we'll certainly sprinkle that in, uh, but man-to-man's our bread and butter. And then just trying to get him to be more vocal at that position, and he's really, really grown in that area. I think certainly a lot of that credit goes to uh, our Navy SEAL guy that came through, our instructor, John McGuire, really got him to get outside his comfort zone, to communicate loudly with more conviction, to have more presence, and I I think he's really done a, uh, a much better job of that already this year than he did last year. Do you see him play it at all with like a little bit of a chip on his shoulder since, since he doesn't have tremendous size or anything? Yeah, he needs to. You can remind him of that. Um, when he does, I think he's really good. You know, yeah, we scrimmaged yesterday. He probably had his best practice he's had in Illinois. I mean, he was dynamic offensively. Um, you know, he fits our system well because he can really play off pick and rolls. Um, you know, so he's he's uh, worked excited to have him. I think he's got a chance to have a really good year. Coach, you know this conference, you know its history. How did you analyze the parity this year where you got a team who could finish anywhere between maybe 2 and 10? Well, obviously there's been great parity since I've, you know, come to Illinois really two years ago, two or three years ago. So it's been, I just mentioned earlier, I think top to bottom, and I've followed it my whole life because I'm from the Midwest. I think when you look at 1 through now 14, the first two years, 1 through 12, you look at the players, the coaches, 
coaching, you know, the venues, the environments. Obviously, the Big Ten Network has done a great job with, uh, you know, promoting our league and elevating the level of our league. I mean, I think it's as good as any in the country, top to bottom, 1 through 12, 1 through 14. You know, I, I've been in leagues over my career that have been top heavy and had really, really good or great teams. But I don't know, even in my first stint in the league, to be honest with you, this is a different beast these three years, top to bottom, uh, than, it, than it was uh, 04 through 08. John, I apologize if you've been asked this before, but what, what did you learn about recruiting from working under that? Um, you know, again, I mentioned earlier, all of us kind of learned a little uh, a little bit of the nuances. Uh, all of us in our coaching family would tell you a little bit from her, Cinda, you know, the how detailed he, he was, how thorough. You know, I think a lot of us benefited from that. Um, you know, I think Thad's great at, at uh, relationship building. I think that's important. And obviously, when you're in recruiting, uh, relationships are vital and are critical. Uh, having them and being able to develop them. Uh, I think that's probably the thing you know, that, I, that I learned uh, the most. But there are a lot of things. When you were working in Ohio, did you, did you work the Cleveland area a lot in recruiting? Sure. What, we worked what, the state a lot. Cleveland in particular, what, what do you see out of that area in terms of the talent that comes out of it? Well, I'd say good talent. You know, when I was at Ohio State, obviously, Lighty was a guy that we recruited, and I thought he had a fantastic career at Ohio State. Um, Reggie Keeley had a great career for us at Ohio. Um, and was a big part of, you know, winning three NCAA tournaments tournament games in Ohio. Reggie was a huge part of that. So it, it's, it's a good area for, for, for basketball. I mean, there's no question. You've got pockets in the state. It's not the only good area. There's other pockets uh, in that state as well. When you're, looking, you're recruiting and you're going after the, the guys who are considered some of the top, and maybe you, you, you miss out on them, you don't flick it in there enough, is there still something to be gained from the fact that you're still in there at the end? People see Illinois on like a Cliff Alexander's list at the end. Yeah, I mean, I think it's helpful. That's at the end of the day, obviously, you want to get that talented person or player, you know, on your roster. But you know, we're uh, we're, we're like the boxer that the bell goes off, and in the first round, we're trying to knock your butt out, and then we come up for air, and then we try to knock you out again. You know, we're not into necessarily style points. Or, as we swing, and we swing really hard. You know, we've been very aggressive. And that's the way we try to play. It's the way we recruit. You know, just I think it fits philosophically kind of who we are. Coach, I know you can't get into specifics like, as far as uh, individuals, but uh, one of your recruits mentioned that you haven't missed an AU game in two years of his. So how do you how do you and your staff juggle all these recruits while making all their games and doing stuff like that, being on the road and basically just juggling such a hectic schedule? Yeah, well, again, I think it, it is challenging for sure, but we're the resources we have at Illinois are off the charts. The fact that I'm able to take a plane helps to get from spot to spot. Um, um, but at the end of the day, you know, there's four of us, that's it, and there's one head coach. So I think, you know, does that matter to some kids? I think it matters more to certain kids, maybe less to others. Um, but, you know, it's great that, that, a, that, a, that a young man would recognize that. Can you talk, last week and today, again without being asked, you said we're, we're missing Darius. Paul for a year. And when you said it last week, that made some people say, ooh, does that mean Darius is definitely coming back? Do you know? Darius has every opportunity, you know, to do that. Uh, that's up to Darius. And just with them, um, Tracy Evans out for this season, how important is the nine stars just to your team this season? Very important. Obviously, point guard play, guard play, huge in college basketball. I think it's uh, really important. Um, and he's played well. You know, unfortunately for us, we've got three guys, and, and Mike Matulip has even learned it as a fourth guy. You know, so we've got three or four guys that have learned the position and they'll know the position. So we've got a little bit of depth there. Um, but anytime you look at college basketball, historically the teams that have been pretty good have good guard play. You know, and obviously those guys are really important. And I was saying in Nana and Hughes, you'd think the first thing that pops out and starts is his shooting, but he was most impressive in his passing. Just what have you seen with his playmaking so far? Oh, he's been. He's 
assist to turnover has been fantastic. He's shot the ball at a high percentage. Um, he's competed. I think he's starting to get a little bit nastier defensively, which is what we need from him. And he started to become more vocal. You know, those are the two things I've kind of challenged him with. And Mod's a kid that's very coachable. He's a smart kid, so he's also teachable. You know, so that that's important. And uh, he's getting better. You know, he's a big part of a big part of our team. So here's a lot of upside to your team. Now. I know you use Ken Palm a lot. You guys were 177 offensively, but 11 defensively. Do you think you kind of get a higher up there offensively? You have a lot of a yeah, we ne never want to obviously give anything away defensively because that's kind of that that is the that's our baseline. That's our identity. That's where we get our toughness and our togetherness is defending and rebounding. So we want to continue to grow and get better there. But obviously, offensively, you don't want to be 177. You know, we've had you know our track record before even coming to Illinois, and in our first year team, we were so to speak, quote unquote, pretty sexy offensively. We could shoot it, drive it. We had multiple weapons, and we shot threes, and you know, we played up and down. And last year, we just were not able to do that with the team that we had. We thought it was in our best interest not to do that last year. Did I like that from a conviction standpoint? Absolutely not. It drives me nuts. But it's kind of who we had, and you know, this year I expect us to be a lot better because we got more weapons. We shoot it better. We pass it better. We're deeper. We have more guys that are capable of scoring double figures on a regular basis. Um, and so I think that's going to make us more versatile offensively. And hopefully you and I won't be sitting here next year and you telling me we're 177th on offense. <laughs> and I think you guys have kind of built this reputation of being kind of annoying to go against. I talked to a lot of players around here and they said all these two play Illinois, they're really physical, you know, they're really hard to score against. So kind of like that you guys have that reputation. Yeah, that, that, and our guys know that. I mean, they should take pride in that. We defend. There's no one in our program that's exempt from defending. They'll tell you that. We chart everything. They're graded out every practice. They're graded out every game. You know, they, they get shown clips of what they do really, really well. They get shown clips of things we need corrected on that end of the floor. You know, so I, I think just that mindset and that the nasty. Mary Ann's Diner, home of the world-famous Diner Stack, now has a third location next to Cranard Center in Urbana. The same fast, friendly service. The same free Wi-Fi. And the same great food. All right in the middle of campus town. Now, no matter where you are, there's a Mary Ann's nearby. Anytime, day or night. Mary Ann's Diner. Down home cooking with small town prices. So I, I think just that mindset and that the nastiness our guys have, and a lot of it comes, Nan is the anchor. You know, Nan is the anchor of the whole deal on defense. Do, do you think he was snubbed not being on the whole defense team? Yes. Yes. <laughs> so you look at him kind of as a really candidate for maybe defensive player of the year in the Big Ten, just with what he's... I can't control that, you know, who votes what, but I, well, I, I do know this. Being... I, I, think he's, I think he's an elite, elite level uh, defensive player and is able to do a lot of things defensively because of versatility, size, length, speed, quickness that you don't typically see in a guy with a guy six foot eleven, two hundred and fifty pounds. Coach, you talked a lot about pushing the pace more this year. How close is this group to your ideal style of play? Closer, a lot closer than the first two years. And I thought we played pretty fast the first year. Um, but we got a little tired late watching the clips because we were only playing at that point seven guys and I had seven to eight on some nights. And I thought we ran out of gas a little bit with that speed. Um, last year uh, wasn't wasn't the tempo that we want or that we've had in the past. It wasn't. It was what we thought we needed to do out of necessity to be competitive. This year I think we're able to open it up a little bit more um, and hit the gas a little bit harder. And we've been practicing that way since October 3rd. Our guys probably would, you know, I tell them all the time, you know, everyone, every kid says they want to run, but really what they mean is they want to shoot quick. I don't know if those guys wanted to run like they ran in preseason conditioning and the mile test and sprints and all the different things we've done. The way we practice right now, we're more, we do more up and down drills than we've ever done. You know, so I think that's challenging them to play the way we want to play long term. And they've adapted pretty well. Yeah, obviously none and Hill both are really talented and I think are very possible of having a breakthrough year. Um, you know, Nunn's situation is a little bit different because he missed all spring training camp, he missed all summer training camp, 
and he missed two to two to half, two and a half to three weeks of fall training camp. Now the, that's the bad news. The good news is is that his knee is as healthy as it's probably been in years. The strength level of the knee, muscles around it. He was able to lift a lot more even than the other guys lift because that's about all he could do for a while. So he weighs more. He's, body's more physically imposing, uh, and again, most importantly, he's really healthy. Now, what I've had to do is try to manage how many practices in a row do I have him go here early in the fall? What days off do I give him? How do I manage that? You know, as you can imagine, it would be like not doing anything for a very long period of time and then sticking him out there and saying, roll, you know, and burning all the tread off the tires. So there's been a method to that madness of bringing him back. Obviously, knowing it's a long season, and uh, you know, trying to make sure he's as ready to go and 100%. And he's built up that cardiovascular to be able to play longer minutes, um, and we're kind of balancing that here in the fall. The loss of Tracy obviously hurts your defense, but do you think that getting Starks is shooting in there can sort of open things up a little bit more, and maybe play closer to how you played when you had DJ Cooper back in the day? Yeah, but we don't have any excuses. I mean, I I hope it doesn't hurt our defense, obviously. And Tracy's a great competitor and a good defender, but you know Ray's a year older. Cosby's a heck of a defender. Nunn's a great defender or good and could be great now that he's healthy with the knee. You know Hill's better defensively. Nan Nana's elite level. I mean, we're, we're we don't want to take a step back because of that. Uh, offensively, obviously, Starks gives you another dimension with his playmaking, his ability to make shots, his ability to make tough shots, his ability to handle the ball, his ability to pass. You know, it gives you some offensive firepower. Coach, every uh, recruit I've talked to has alluded to that relationship you build with them. What do you think it is about your personality that really relates well to these teenage kids that you're interacting? You know, I don't know, Alex. You'd have to ask them. I did, again, earlier when Steve asked me the deal about, you know, where, how do you think people feel about your program? We're just we're going to be ourselves. I mean, I'm pretty convicted about how we do things, how we treat our players, how we recruit. Um, you know, at Illinois, we say we, to, to do well here, you got to love ball and you got to love other people. How you sell the you know, program? So is. that's kind of who we are. It's how, you know, it's, it's it's. I would hope they would say that it's genuine, and my staff is that way too. I hire staff that's that way, and. Our, my guys on staff, they love other people and they love ball, you know, so I, I think hopefully that shines through a little bit. Uh, do you like these things? Do you like talking about your team and talking about expectations? Um, I think it's a tribute to Illinois and what a great institution Illinois is and uh, the great tradition that the basketball program has that we get so many people out that want to learn more about our team. Um, you know, it's a privilege, you know, for sure. You know, it's not something necessarily that uh, um, I, I don't I don't dread it. I mean, I enjoy talking about our team and our guys. And we've got great guys, and, you know. So that's, you know, again, I think it's more of a tribute to the institution and the tradition of the basketball program. Uh, you guys are going to have some interesting options at the four this year. Do you think that that spot Malcolm Hill can man uh, in the starting lineup? He'll be a part what, of that what equation. What do you think of Hill's development, sort of, in terms of yeah. being an inside-out guy this year? Yeah, he'll be a part of that equation for sure. we got a lot of versatility up front with him, Ron Black, Finky, Nana. So you can play Nana with Mav. You know, uh, Nana knows both positions. So we got a lot of versatility up front. Are you thinking Austin, a lot of versatility. Are you thinking of going with the two-post offense or more of a we'll play both. oriented We'll play both. Yeah. yeah. And how have you seen LeRon's development early in practice as a guy who could maybe contribute uh, right away for you? Well, he can contribute for sure. It's a matter of him learning, I think, and being trusted to learn and execute the system. Uh, but trust me, if you were playing a pickup game, you'd want him on your team. You wouldn't want to go against him. Uh, what are the strengths of his game that you've seen? Early? Physical. Rebounding. Uh, motor, uh, just a relentless competitiveness, hates to lose, tries to win everything he does, mentality. You know, so now we've got to get that channeled and have that same aggressiveness, that same attacking mentality, and make sure we have some purpose with it. You know, but I like the fact that he's that way because, you know, I'd rather try to wind the guy down than wind the guy up. Is it fair to say that the, the learning curve is more about pack line defense and where to pos position it? Right? I think it's both. Uh, it's, it's both defensively, it's positioning, what you're bringing up, it's rotations on defense, it's learning our different coverages, it's 
you know, offensively, you know, uh, playing well with other guys, you know, it, it, just, a, just a learning curve there. It's nothing he's not doing. I mean, he's up in the office on the, on the regular with Dustin, watching film and wanting to learn and pick up things and asking questions. You know, his, his commitment level is, is extraordinary. Are you teaching more of the game now than the system that you have so many players back? It's a great question. Yeah, I, yes, to answer. And I said that the other day. I'm teaching them how to play basketball is what I call it, more within the system. Um, you know, it, it's kind of like uh, I used to teach, teach geometry. And, uh, you know, to solve different equations, you had to know different theorems. You know, if you didn't know the theorems, it was, you weren't going to get the answer or the solution to the problem. I think our guys right now know the theorems, so to speak, at such a higher level that, yes, you're able to give them more complicated things, more challenging things. You're able to teach more of the nuances, the, the intricacies of the offense. Uh, you're able to wrinkle things more because of their knowledge of things. I think that's very true. What did you see from Cosby during his redshirt year that leads you to believe he can be a guy who can contribute offensively for you? Cosby's a ridiculous worker. Um, is in the gym outside of hours that we mandate as much or more than any player. We've got a handful of guys that are like that. Uh, his body's changed. He's physically stronger. He's mentally tougher. Uh, he's really worked mentally to become a guy that can handle success and adversity equally well. And he's done that this year much better than he did that last year because he's so competitive he hates to lose. So figuring out how to channel that. Um, and I think he's done a much better job of that. I mean, he's a much better player uh, than he was during his sit-out year. One final question about uh, recruiting. Do you want to get into this? Um, how does your family handle you being on the road so often? Like it's hard. Summer, spring, so it's hard when you got an eight-year-old, a five-year-old, and a pregnant wife. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's uh, it's hard. But my wife understands. She gets it. Uh, she's an important part of our recruiting efforts, as are the other wives in the family atmosphere. That when the kids come to campus for official visits, they they see how close our fam our families are, how close the players are, how close the and tight knit everybody is. Um, so she plays a huge role in it, and, uh, and she allows me to do this and you know, try to give my best effort towards it. Uh, it takes a lot of pressure off me, but it puts a lot of pressure on her as well. How have the guys been in the first couple of weeks of practice? What do you expect going into this? Yeah, we've been, I think, even better than expected. Uh, I'm excited. Uh, guys are holding each other accountable. We're getting better every day. Um, I like our depth. We're a little bit dinged up right now with just some knick-knack injuries, so today was a day off and a much-needed day off. We'll try to manage that moving forward and keep guys healthy. I think that'll be a big key. How the freshmen have done today? Well, you know, Black and Finky are learning uh, day by day. I think our upperclassmen have done a great job teaching them and helping them. Thank you. Sure.